Our next speaker is Jill Violet, the CEO and founder of Playworks. Her organization, yes. Jill's organization brings play and physical activities to children across the country with offices in 23 cities, serving over, get this, 400,000 students through direct and training services, reaching more than 750 schools and youth serving organizations. Sharing her perspective on unlocking our superpowers, let's welcome Jill Violet. So if I could get the house lights up, thank you so much. I wanted to start off today with a quick game. And given the nature of the space, the game we're going to play is called Stand Up. And it's very straightforward. I find with grown-ups it's best not to obfuscate. The way the rules work is I'm going to make a series of statements. And if that statement is true for you, I'm going to ask you to stand up, pause for a second, look around, check out who else is standing up, and then you're going to sit back down. And then if standing up and down isn't working for you today, you can just make an upward sweeping gesture to signify your engagement, OK? If you are a parent, stand up. All right, sit back down. If you are left-handed. So left-handed people always have a lot of love for each other. Sit back down. If you have ever been in a musical. Sit. Wow, OK, sit back down. If you have already exercised today. All right. Yes, yes. Look down. I'm getting to the tricky part now. If you have any Justin Timberlake on your MP3 player or iPod, stand up. That's right. You're bringing sexy back. That's right. Back down. OK, last one. If you are one of those people who no matter what time you leave for the airport, you can bend the space-time continuum and always catch the plane. Stand up. <laughs> See? Look at all you. How much does this drive your spouses crazy? It's completely. So I'd like to start with a game, because I want you to have that experience of playing. I want you right now to think about the cognitive shift you experienced while we were just playing, how the way that you were engaged with my words is different than when just someone's standing up on a stage and dropping knowledge on you. How the physical reaction was different. How you feel your pulse quicken. How standing up and down is, is, makes you more alive. How you're more aware of the people around you. And how overall combined that creates a spark. The nonprofit I started, Playworks, really taps that spark. That's what we do. We go out in schools all across the country and we leverage that spark. We leverage play and recess in particular to make places where kids feel like they are important in their own education. And while it's a great idea, the fact is we know we have impact. Mathematica and Stanford University just completed a two-year randomized control trial of our program. And what they saw was that kids at Playwork schools felt safer. They saw that teachers were recovering that most precious of commodities, instructional time. They found that kids were, not surprisingly, more vigorously physically active. And maybe most strikingly, what they saw was that teachers reported 43% lower bullying in playwork schools than in, in non-playwork schools. Yeah. If you were going to ask me how we do that or why I think that works, I think the answer would have surprised you a little. Because I would tell you, we're in the superpower business. Now, superpowers. You may not have like, tripped on this or thought about this too much. Superpowers are a little hard to define. And in fact, they're a little controversial. And, and to get right into the heart of the controversy, I want to talk about the Batman question. There are those among us who believe that Batman is not actually a superhero. They would argue he doesn't have a mutant superpower. He's just a brainy rich guy with a really amazing butler. On the other end of the spectrum, and I will confess that I am on this other end of the spectrum, there is a more inclusive definition of superpowers, right? It is superpowers are that quirky, authentic, unique mix of personality and talents that are brought to bear in response to an opportunity or a need to breathtaking effect. So, you know, you can use your superpowers for good or you can use your superpowers for not so good. 
but I would argue that Batman is a superhero and has superpowers because of his dark night side, right? He combines being broody and you know, compulsive with being a brainy rich guy with an awesome butler to create this incredible force for thwarting evildoers. And, and therein is the, the superpower. Now, by this definition, if you're willing to accept my definition, you could argue that this is a room full of people, all with superpowers, and many of us were lucky enough to discover those superpowers through service. Now, before you protest and say, no, no, come on, I don't, it's not, that's not a superpower, let me remind you, superheroes always say that their power is no big deal. You know, Superman's flying along, there's this train that's hanging off the suspension bridge, he puts it back on the track. To him, you know, he had the capacity and there was a need and no big thing. The other thing, though, about superpowers is that we have some ambivalence about them, right? They are often that thing, they're grounded in that thing that makes us feel different or other. And being other and unique is great up until a point when it takes that sort of scary, sharp left turn into lonely. So the, the narrative around superheroes, I think, is so popular because most of us wander around feeling kind of other, and the superhero genre tells a story in which that thing that makes us feel different is in fact our strength, that it is the thing that is gonna make us feel needed by other people. And then you add on the Justice League and the X-Men and groups like Point of Light, and not only do you get to feel like you're needed, but like you belong, those two basic human desires. I'm not the first person to obsess and think compulsively about superpowers. William James, the uh, American philosopher and father of American psychiatry, he wrote all about them in his essay on the energies of man. Okay, he didn't actually refer to them as superpowers in the essay, but he's talking about superpowers. And what's so interesting about what he says is he says there are the energies of man and then there are those things that unlock the energies of man. There are the superpowers and then there are the experiences and the environment and, and the activities that unlock our superpowers. So getting back to that question about how is it that Playworks has the effect we have, I would offer to you that by providing play in our schools the way we do, we unlock our kids' superpowers. That it's not that we're going in and making it possible for the kids to recover instructional time or be more physically active or that we reduce the bullying, but we unlock our kids' superpowers and they do those things. They achieve those outcomes. And for me, it's in understanding that difference between our superpowers and unlocking our superpowers that I see the really the most hopeful future for service. I'm a giant fan of commencement speeches. I watch them, I cry, my children mock me. And <laughs> I was watching online, o Oprah gave Harvard's commencement speech this year, and she rocked it, it's awesome, I cried. And, uh, my favorite part of the, of the speech is she's talking about how over the years, doing all the interviews she'd done, there was this one persistent truth, that no matter how powerful or how successful the person was that she interviewed, they were always looking for validation. So she told the story about how Beyonce came on and she performed and she was Beyonce, right? She was awesome. And after she was done, she walks over to Oprah, she hands Oprah the mic, and as she's handing Oprah the mic, she says, was that okay? The next time you are out doing the work that you do, and someone that you work with, a kid, a senior, a vet, a coworker, when they risk it, and they put their talents and their personality out there to address some need, and then they look at you, and whether they say the words or not, but when they, they look at you and they convey, was that okay? The future of service depends on you doing everything in your power to make sure they know you saw their superpower and that we need them and that they belong. Thank you so much. <laughs>